before we start the video, go and visit our sponsor, RPM Technique. They're one of the UK's leading Porsche specialists. They specialize in sales, service, they build engines and transmissions, and they've also restored lots of award-winning cars. Welcome back to the AAA MF YouTube channel. Now, one of the reasons I started a YouTube channel was because I used to get endless amounts of questions from my friends about what car should I buy? And then I ended up getting friends of friends calling me saying, what car should I buy? So I decided to set up a YouTube channel so that I could give my opinions on lots of different cars. And today we've got something really interesting to film. We have a GT3 RS from 2007. No, that's not the one. This is the one. As you can see, it's got bright orange wheels. Now the 2007 GT3 RS was the first of the 997 shape, and you could have it in orange with black wheels, black with orange wheels, and you could have it in Viper Green with black wheels. Viper Green is really, really rare and commands a premium over this. Now what's really interesting is that this is a right-hand drive GT3 RS, a right-hand drive GT3 RS 4-litre costs in the region of £425,000 upwards, and this is around £120,000 for a slightly higher mileage model. So you're talking about a difference of £300,000 between the first generation GT3 RS 997 and the final one that they did. Now, obviously that has close to 500 brake horsepower. This has 414 brake horsepower. But what are they really like to drive? Is that really 300,000 pounds more than this? So that's what we're gonna find out today. Another interesting point for all you Porsche fans is this. The new GT4 has 414 brake horsepower. This has 415 brake horsepower. Now the GT4, the new one, has GT3 suspension at the front, manual gearbox, flat six engine. This has a manual gearbox with a flat six engine. So where is your money gonna go? Because a new GT4 now comes in at around 90 to 95,000 pounds, and this car is around 120,000 pounds. So it's not a huge difference. And people always ask me, GT4 or 911, I think, that this car is as close as you're gonna to get to a GT4. Now this car has been tracked a lot. As you can see, it's got the towing eye here, so that if the car comes off, they can pull the car off the track. Um, it's done about 35,000 miles by Eddie, and um, Eddie's also got a GT4, which is quite interesting. So why don't we take it out for a spin, see what we think, and um, I'm excited, I've never driven one. <laughs> I have waited a long time to drive this car, the 2007 GT3 RS. There's a few reasons for that. Number one, one of my friends, Andrew, keeps on asking me, should he buy one? The second reason is because it's got very similar power output to the GT4, and I've always wanted to know if you were spending around 90 to 120-ish, would you buy a GT4 or an early 911 GT3 RS? The third reason is because I wanted to see how different this is to my car, given that my car has appreciated so much in value. And now there's quite a big gap between the early generation and, and the last of the GT3 RS 997 model. So I've been driving it now for around 20, 30 minutes and I'm pleased to tell you, it is a lot of fun. Just like the GT4 is, just like the GT3 RS 4 liter is. These cars are designed by the GT division of Porsche and they know how to make a fun car. What makes them fun is the manual gearbox predominantly and then the engine. So I think you have a lot more fun in a car with a manual gearbox. There's something about 
having a manual gearbox that makes it much more engaging. I filmed with a R8 V10 Spider recently and it has an incredible V10 engine, but there was something detached about the car because it wasn't a manual. I just felt like I wasn't really involved in the driving experience. Whereas with the GT4 and the GT3 RS models, I feel completely immersed in the driving experience. It's also partly to do with these amazing bucket seats. They really, really hug you. These ones feel even more huggable than, uh, than my ones. I don't know if that's the right term, huggable. They support you <coughs> much more than uh, even the 918 style seats in the GT4 that I drove recently. So this is a naturally aspirated engine. It's only a 3.6. They bought it out to 3.8 and then finally four liters for my car over the span of about four or five years. Now, this car I think is fantastic value because you can buy a high mileage one. We're talking about 25,000 miles for about 120 and a low mileage one for about 130, 140. And it's really, really great fun. If you want a track car and you don't want to spend 300, 400,000 pounds on a four litre, this is the perfect, perfect track car. Now I said that we were going to do this video to compare it to my 4 litre and to compare it to a GT4. So I've driven the new GT4 recently and there's a video of that on my channel and I've also used to own the previous generation GT4 so I've had a lot of miles in both cars and I've got the 4 litre so how does it compare to both of those cars? The GT4 is a fantastic car. There is no doubt in my mind it is one of the best driver's cars in the world and one of the best driver's cars Porsche's ever made. So when we're talking about comparisons it's not like you're saying that this is a bad car that's a good car. We're talking about nuances in terms of how pleasurable they are to drive and what are the differences and different subtleties of the cars. So I'm going to start by saying all three are amazing driver's cars naturally aspirated engine, manual gearboxes. The GT4, although it has a four litre flat six engine, the new one doesn't sound great. And that's one of the biggest, for me, one of the biggest drawbacks of the GT4. This sounds great. It has a really, really great flat six engine that sounds phenomenal. So what is the difference between the GT4 and this? Well, the 911, GT3 RS really is the pinnacle of, I would say, Porsche racing program. You know, they've really designed this to be lightweight, high in power, great handling car, which is why you've got that big wing at the back. And this one has the roll cage in it. And it really is a track focused car. And it's a 911. So ultimately, when you're sitting in a 911, you feel a little bit more special than driving a GT4. And like I said, it's got much better sound than the GT4. I would say that the GT4 probably is a better car to drive every day. If you don't mind having a manual gearbox, this is a little bit more track focused, but this is more enjoyable. I, I, I'm having a lot of fun in this car. I actually can't believe there's such a big price difference between this and the four litre. But then again, the four litre is covered in carbon fiber and it's limited to 600 models. So let's move on. So the GT4 probably is a better daily. It's a bit, little bit softer than this. This is a little bit firmer because it's set up for the track. And I would say that the clutch is probably a tiny bit heavier in this over the GT4. But there's not a huge amount of difference. I would take this over a GT4. Um, yeah, definitely I would take this over a GT4. But I do like the design of the new GT4. The 4 litre has nearly 500 brake horsepower. This has 414, so there's quite a big step up in power, and you really do feel that all the way through the rev range. The 4 litre has amazing torque. Now, when I say, I, I'm going to repeat, that doesn't mean this is a bad car and the 4 litre is a good car. By the way, the 4 litre is in front of me, which is, I keep pointing. But when you put your foot down in this, so I'm in third, going to go down to second, 
example, you've got the red line goes up to 8,200 RPM and you can't ever really get to that red line on the road. I've been driving this now for a while and I can't get up to that red line because you run out of space on the road. So it's really intoxicating though, taking it all the way up to the red line is really, really fun. Now the other difference between this car and my four litre is the steering. The steering on this car doesn't feel as sharp. Now that could be because it's 12 years old it, and it's had a lot of track work, but I'm guessing that they improved the steering on the four litre and I know mine has rose jointed suspension. I don't know if this one does, I doubt it. So the technology on the four litre is probably better and it's newer and obviously remember my car has ceramic brakes I don't think this one does and my car has carbon fiber on the front wings and the bonnet so it's lighter so it's gonna have better turning because it's obviously lighter and it's got less unsprung mass I think all of these lovely Porsche cars with manual gearboxes are gonna be really coveted and I think the air-cooled cars from the 90s going to feel so so special in 10 years time when there's nothing like it on the road you know at the moment you've got the GT4 which is naturally aspirated with a manual box and it feels very special but I'm sure that a naturally aspirated engine and probably the manual gearbox are going to be a thing of the past in a few years time I don't know how many more years we've got you know, Ferrari don't make manual boxes anymore, nor do Lamborghini. So Porsche are one of the last to put a manual box in their cars and hats off to them because I absolutely love them. This car is so much fun. I'm driving down a country lane, 5,000 RPM. I cannot get up to 8,000 because my car's in front of me, but the steering is really good, the pickup is really good, but it does feel like a track car, but it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of fun. Thank you to Edward for uh, letting me drive it. Eddie Cowan, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Fantastic 911. Fantastic 911. Possibly better than a GT4. Yes, it's better than a GT4. A future classic. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on YouTube. We'll see you soon.